I always see Ned Stark as the good guy or early underlying hero of the first Game of Thrones novel, as he becomes such a likeable character as the story goes on. Yet George R. R. Martin once said that there wasn't specifically good guys versus bad guys in Game of Thrones, that he preferred the characters to have transitional experiences that made us like or dislike them over time. For example, we all hated Jamie Lannister in season 1 of the TV show and the book. Many of us kinda love him in the current season. And I don't want him to die, but also I didn't want Daenerys to die. So when the two came up against each other, I didn't know who to root for. Or Cersei Lannister, a woman who has done horrific things that are so bad she had many of us cursing her name. Yet I don't know about every other fan, but I took so much satisfaction in watching her get revenge on Scepter Unessa. You're not going to die today. You're not going to die for quite a while. But what Game of Thrones has is men of honour, like Ned, or Sir Barris and Selmy, or Rob Stark and his younger brother John. the latter two men being taught by their father, a man who truly depicted the definition of the word honour. Ned Stark, though having his life end in such disturbing circumstances, is one of the most interesting characters in the entire Game of Thrones series. In this video, I'm going to take you through Ned's entire life, from his early days growing up in the Airy, to his involvement in Robert Baratheon's rebellion, right up to his execution under the order of King Joffrey Baratheon. Welcome to Game of Thrones lore. This is the life of Eddard Ned Stark. Eddard was born at Winterfell in 263 AC as the second son of Lord Rickard Stark and Lady Liara Stark. He had one older brother, Brandon, and two younger siblings, Lyanna and Benjen. At the age of eight, Eddard was fostered by Lord John Arryn at the Airy. While there, another young boy by the name of Robert Baratheon was also fostered by Arryn, and the two boys became very close friends, more like brothers. Lord Arryn had no children at the time, so he really became like a second father to both Eddard and Robert. And when Eddard reached the age of 16, he was a man fully grown, and divided his time between Winterfell and the Airy. During one of his visits to Winterfell, Eddard carried a wedding proposal from Robert to his father, Lord Rickard, who agreed to betroth his daughter Lyanna to Eddard's best friend. When Lyanna later expressed her belief that Robert would never keep to one bed, having heard about Maya Stone, Robert's bastard daughter in the Vale of Arryn, Eddard recalled having seen the child and was therefore unable to deny her existence. And when it came to possible suitors for Ned, Lord Roderick Riswell proposed that his daughter Barbary marry him or even his older brother Brandon. Ned had the classic Stark physical traits. He had a long face, grey eyes and long brown hair. He was handsome, but not quite as handsome as his older brother Brandon. As Catelyn Tully once stated this, as she was Brandon's betrothed before his untimely death. Ned is also of average height, but medium build. Again, not quite as tall or as big as his brother, but he was said to have a good and kind heart. Eddard's story continues to the tourney he attended at Harrenhal that was held in the year 281 AC. Also present at this tourney were his friend Robert Baratheon, foster father John Arryn, and Ned's three siblings Brandon, Lyanna and Benjen. It was during this tourney that Eddard met Howland Reed, one of his father's bannermen. Howland and Eddard remained friends for the rest of their lives after this encounter. During the opening feast, young Eddard saw a Shara Dane, a lady in waiting to Princess Elia Martell. He danced with her later that night, but only after his older brother Brandon had spoken to her on his behalf, since Ned himself was too shy. Ned was also present during the final jousts, where Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, after becoming victor, passed over his own wife Elia to crown Lyanna the Queen of Love and Beauty. Brandon Stark had to be restrained from confronting Rhaegar for his lack of respect to Lyanna's betrothed, Robert Baratheon. Eddard would remember this moment as the moment when all smiles died years later. 
The following year, it was believed that Eddard's sister Lyanna was abducted by Prince Rhaegar. Brandon rode to King's Landing in anger, but he was arrested when he threatened the Crown Prince. Lord Rickard Stark was then summoned to King's Landing and was also arrested shortly after his arrival. When he demanded a trial by combat, both he and Brandon were executed at the command of King Aerys Targaryen II. Aerys' next step was to demand that John Arryn send him the heads of his former wards, Eddard and Robert. John refused and instead called his banners. With his father and brother dead, Eddard was now the Lord of Winterfell. He wanted to raise his banners to join Robert's rebellion, but getting from the Vale of Arryn to the north was complicated by the loyalty to the Iron Throne of Gulltown, the Vale's chief port. Eddard crossed the Mountains of the Moon to the Fingers and then hired a fisherman to bring him to White Harbour with a boat. They were both caught in a storm on the bight and sadly the fisherman drowned. However, his daughter brought Eddard to the Three Sisters. When he arrived at Sisterton, House Burrell's maester urged Lord Burrell to deliver Eddard's head to King Aerys Targaryen II, but Lord Burrell, knowing that John Arryn and Robert Baratheon had taken Goldtown in the meantime, was unsure who would prevail in the conflict. Thus, he let Ned leave for White Harbour, telling him to remain silent about his stay in Sisterton in case the rebellion failed. Eddard called his banners and marched south to join Robert, arriving with Lord Hoster Tully in time to turn the tide at the Battle of the Bells. Afterward, he went to River Run to marry Hoster's elder daughter Catelyn, who had been betrothed to his brother Brandon before his untimely death. John Arryn married Hoster's younger daughter Liza in the same ceremony. The double wedding bound House Tully to the rebels' cause. The rebels then won their decisive victory in the Battle of the Trident, in which Robert Baratheon killed Prince Rhaegar Targaryen in single combat at the Ruby Ford. Because Robert had been wounded by Rhaegar, it fell on Eddard to pursue the remnants of Aerys' armies all the way back to King's Landing. When Eddard arrived at the capital, Lord Tywin Lannister's forces had already sacked the city. Ned had developed contempt for House Lannister during the rebellion, as Tywin had remained neutral in an apparent attempt to join the winning side in the end. Eddard's contempt increased when he learned that Tywin had conquered the city by treachery and that his men had brutally killed Rhaegar's wife Elia Martell and her two children, Rhaenys and Aegon. In addition, Lannister flags were flying over the Red Keep room when Eddard had arrived and, as he rode into the throne room to claim the crown for Robert, he found King Aerys' body at the steps leading to the Iron Throne, on which the King's killer, Sir Jaime Lannister, was sitting. Ned felt that the sack of King's Landing dishonoured Robert's cause. He was disappointed that Robert, upon arriving in the city, did not share his moral outrage and in particular defended the murder of Rhaegar's children. He also ignored Eddard's counsel that Jaime Lannister should be made to join the Night's Watch for breaking his oath as a Knight of the King's Guard by not protecting the King. Their disagreements created a rift between Eddard and Robert that not even John Arryn was able to breach. Eddard left Robert in King's Landing and went to Storm's End, where he lifted the siege of the castle. Lord Mace Tyrell and his armies yielded to Eddard without a fight. Afterwards, Eddard travelled to the Red Mountains of Dorne to liberate his sister Lyanna, who was apparently being held at the Tower of Joy. When he arrived, along with six companions, he found a tower guarded by three members of the King's Guard, Sir Arthur Dane, Sir Oswald Wentz, and the Lord Commander Sir Gerald Hightower. The resulting skirmish saw the deaths of all but Eddard and one companion, Howland Reed. Eddard is said to have killed Sir Arthur, who held the famed title of the Sword of the Morning in single combat. Unfortunately, when Eddard found Lyanna, she was already dying. Before her death, she made Eddard promise her something, and what he promised her has not yet been revealed in the book. The experience haunts Eddard, and he recalls her promise me moment on multiple occasions. However, the shared grief over Lyanna's death led to his reconciliation with his friend, now known as King Robert I. And everyone, I just want to highlight the fact that although this secret hasn't been revealed, there is high speculation that George or or Martin gave the future plot of Lyanna being John's mother to the TV show's producers, 
so they could keep up with the speed the show itself was taking. And in addition to the prophecy surrounding Rhaegar and the prince that was promised, with Rhaegar needing to have that third child, it is highly likely that the TV show's plot will match the books in terms of Jon Snow's true parentage. It would be too great an inaccuracy otherwise, but at the same time I feel it's incredibly important to respect the fact that the books are the reason for the TV show in the first place. So for now, I'm going to go with the books and say that Lyanna is not Jon's mother in the eyes of canon. When Eddard returned home to Winterfell, he brought with him his bastard son Jon Snow. This strained the relationship with his wife Catelyn, who had given birth to their son Rob at Riverrun during the war. Eddard refused to speak to her about Jon's mother. However, stories concerning her identity circulated nonetheless. When Catelyn heard rumours that the boy's mother was the Dornish noblewoman Ashara Dane, she confronted Eddard about it, but he told her in a brusque manner that the child was his blood and that was all she needed to know. Again, such a strong hint that the child belonged to a sibling. He subsequently silenced the rumours about Ashara too. Sansa Stark recalls hearing whispers that Jon's mother was commonborn, and Lord Edric Dane believes that, rather than his aunt Ashara, Jon Snow's mother was a woman called Wyla, who worked for House Dane and at one point served as Edric's wet nurse. When asked about the mother of his bastard son by King Robert Baratheon, Eddard also mentions the name Wyla. However, Lord Godric Burrell claims that the daughter of the fisherman, who sneaked Eddard away from the fingers, gave birth to Jon Snow. Eddard buried the bones of his deceased kin in the crypt of Winterfell. Breaking the tradition of only Stark kings and lords having statues, Ned had them carve one for Brandon and Lyanna next to that of Lord Rickard. Barbary Dustin, now Lady of Barrowton, resented the fact that Eddard managed to return the horse but not the bones of her husband, Lord Willem, who had died fighting alongside Ned in Dorne. Ned's younger brother Benjen then joined the Night's Watch. As a second son, Eddard had never expected to become Lord of Winterfell and as such did not always feel equal to the task, determined it had been all meant for his elder brother Brandon. In 289 AC, Ned travelled south to help Robert suppress Greyjoy's rebellion. After the decisive siege of Pike and Lord Balon Greyjoy's surrender, Eddard took Balon's only surviving son Theon to Winterfell as a ward and hostage. When Ned tried to be like a father to Theon from time to time, the boy still found Lord Stark to be cold. During his marriage to Catelyn, Eddard had five children with her, Rob, Sansa, Arya, Bran and Rickon. Eddard has taught Rob and Jon Snow, his bastard son, about command and battle. He was fiercely protective of his family and would not see them in harm's way at any cost. Now that Ned's backstory is established, it's time to move on to the recent events of the novels. His journey begins in the first book, A Game of Thrones. Lord Eddard executes Jared, a deserter of the Night's Watch who claims to have been attacked by others. On the return to Winterfell, the party discovers a direwolf dead on the roadside, her throat pierced by a stag that she had slain. Swayed by his bastard son Jon Snow, Eddard decides not to slay her newborn pups, and instead allows his children to raise them. That same day, a raven arrives bearing word of the death of Lord Jon Arryn, who fostered Eddard as well as Robert Baratheon when they were children, and who had long served Robert as Hand of the King. Jon Arryn is dead. Soon, Robert arrives with half the court to Winterfell, and Eddard grudgingly accepts his offer to replace Lord Arryn as Hand, as well as a betrothal of Prince Joffrey to Ned's daughter Sansa, finally uniting their houses after many years of friendship. Another message arrives, this one from Liza Arryn, Jon's widow and the sister of Eddard's wife Catelyn, sent to Winterfell in secret. Liza warns the Starks that the Lannisters were involved in her husband's death. When Eddard's son Bran falls, and slips into a coma, Eddard and the royal court remain at Winterfell for almost another fortnight, though they eventually decide to leave. During the journey south, Eddard and Robert are at odds whether or not to be concerned about the wedding of the exiled Princess Daenerys Targaryen to Khal Drogo of the Dothraki. 
at our youngest daughter Arya is involved in an incident in which Crown Prince Joffrey Baratheon is injured by her direwolf Nymeria. When Nymeria cannot be found, Queen Cersei Lannister demands the death of Sansa's direwolf Lady. So be it. We have another wolf. And Eddard, despite much hesitance, executes the wolf himself at Derry, as it is a command from the king. In order to prevent Queen Cersei from requiring the pelt, he has her body sent north to be buried at Winterfell. Upon arriving at King's Landing, Eddard is summoned to a small council meeting and becomes accustomed with Lord Peter Baelish. After the meeting, Lord Baelish takes Eddard to one of his brothels, where he has been hiding Eddard's wife Catelyn. She reveals how a cat's paw tried to kill their son Bran with a Valyrian steel dagger. Peter, known as Littlefinger, claims that the dagger used to be his, but was won in a bet by Tyrion Lannister. Littlefinger promises to aid Eddard, and due to Ned being aware of Peter's fondness of Catelyn, trusts him. Eddard is shocked to learn that the crown is heavily indebted due to Robert's extravagance, and John Arryn and the small council have been unable to restrain him. Robert decrees a great tournament is to be held in honour of Eddard's appointment as Hand of the King, despite Eddard's protests of the cost. The Hand's tourney, featuring a joust, melee and archery contest, attracts knights and freeriders from all over the Seven Kingdoms. Ned and Sir Barristan Selmy, Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, both convince Robert not to participate in the melee. Ned then discovers that his daughter Arya is in the possession of a sword called Needle, but decides to have her trained in how to use it instead of taking her sword away. He hires Sirio Farrell, a former first sword of Bravos. While Ned later wonders whether Sirio is a proper teacher for Arya, he allows the lessons to continue and is eventually willing to ask Sirio to continue his work at Winterfell. Ned investigates John Arryn's activities before his death, and he discovers that John spent a great deal of time with Lord Stannis Baratheon and had been visiting several of Robert's bastard children in the city. Grand Maester Pycelle provides the hand with the lineages and histories of the great houses of the Seven Kingdoms, which John had been reading. When news reaches King's Landing that Daenerys is pregnant, Robert holds a council meeting demanding she be put to death. Eddard and Barrison are the only ones to speak out against the move, but Robert, driven by his hatred of the Targaryens, insists on the assassination. Eddard, unwilling to cooperate, resigns his post in protest. Before his planned departure from King's Landing to return to Winterfell, Eddard visits another of Robert's bastard children, a girl named Barra, found by Lord Baelish. Returning from the meeting, he is ambushed by Sir Jaime Lannister, who wants revenge for the seizure of his brother Tyrion by Catelyn at the Crossroads Inn, a fact Eddard had learned only the day before from Yorn, a wandering crow. Eight men die from the ensuing melee, and Ned's leg is broken when his horse falls upon him. Maester Pycelle treats Ned, who has a fever dream of the Tower of Joy. While recovering, Robert visits his friend, pardoning him and returning him to office as Hand of the King. Eddard sits on the Iron Throne and hears petitions while Robert is out on a hunt. Sir Raymond Darry, Sir Mark Piper and Sir Carl Vance bring the news that several villages near the border of the Westerlands have been ravaged by Sir Gregor Clegane. Eddard sends Lord Beric Tondarrion, Thoris of Myr and a number of knights and members of his own household guard to bring the mountain to justice for his crimes against the Riverlands. While investigating John Arryn's interest in Robert's bastard children, Eddard discovers to his horror that Robert's three legitimate children are in fact the product of incest between Queen Cersei and her brother Jaime. Eddard decides to confront Cersei, giving her a chance to flee with her children while she still can. However, Cersei has orchestrated Robert's assassination. As Robert lays on his deathbed, Eddard rebuffs both the suggestion of Robert's youngest brother Lord Renly Baratheon that they seize control of the royal children and Peter Baelish's urgings to rule as regent while Cersei and Jaime's 13 year old son Prince Joffrey accedes to the Iron Throne, instead planning to deliver it to the elder of Robert's younger brothers, Lord Stannis. Littlefinger promises Eddard the support of the City Watch of King's Landing. 
Vayan Pool arranges for Sansa and Arya to return north on the Wind Witch, and Ned orders Tomard to deliver a letter to Stannis at Dragonstone. Not wanting to have her betrothal to Joffrey broken, Sansa informs Queen Cersei of her father's plan to leave King's Landing. When Ned confronts Cersei in the throne room, he is betrayed by Littlefinger. Red Cloaks and Jon Slint's Gold Cloaks kill Eddard's remaining men, and Littlefinger takes the Valyrian dagger from Lord Stark. Sirio allows Arya to escape to Meryn Trance, but Sansa is captured by the Lannisters. In response to his father's imprisonment for treason by Cersei, Robb Stark calls the Northern Banners to Winterfell and marches south. Call the Banners. All of them were old. They've all sworn to defend my father, have they not? Varys visits Eddard Stark in the dungeons, informing him that if he confesses to treason, his life will be spared and he'll be given the opportunity to join the Night's Watch. Eddard initially refuses, but agrees to swallow his honour to save the life of his daughter Sansa, who is in Lannister custody. He is taken to the steps of the Great Sept of Baelor where, unbeknownst to him, Yorin, his daughter Arya and the disguised Barris and Selmy are amongst the crowd. Eddard makes a false public confession, but the plan does not go as promised when King Joffrey declares that Eddard must be executed, to the evident shock of Cersei, Varys and the High Septon. Sir Illyn, bring me his head. Sir Illyn Payne beheads Eddard with his own great sword, Ice. Joffrey has Eddard's head placed on a spike and actually forces Sansa to view it. His bones were eventually sent back to Winterfell under the orders of Tyrion Lannister. After the, the Battle King of the, the Camps, Robb Stark is proclaimed king in the north by the Northmen and Rivermen at River Run. Ned Stark was so well respected by so many that it's no surprise that the North revolted in retaliation after his execution. He proved that honour commanded respect and left a lasting legacy, something his children held with pride. He remains for me one of the most likeable characters of the entire series. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.